Hello, hello, welcome, welcome to day 31 of our Bible in a Year Challenge. My name is Sandra. I'm going to be your host for today. We are committed to reading our Bibles in a year with less than 20 minutes daily read time. Yes, you heard me right. Less than 20 minutes daily read time. Please, if you're on YouTube, subscribe to our channel. If you're on Facebook or Instagram, follow our page like and share our content we're excited to have you here let's get started day 31 january 31st 2022 365 days bible reading old testament job 19 job 20 job 21 new testament matthew 21 1 to 17 psalms and proverbs psalm 18 1 to 6 Old Testament NIV version Job 19 1 to 29 Job said then Job replied how long will you torment me and crush me with words ten times now you have reproached me shamelessly you attack me if it is true that I have gone astray my error remains my concern alone if indeed you would exalt yourselves above me and use my humiliation against me, then know that, know that God has wronged me and drawn his net around me. Though I cry violence, I get no response. Though I call for help, there is no justice. He has blocked my way, so I cannot pass. He has shrouded my paths in darkness. He has stripped me of my honor and remove the crown from my head. He tears me down on every side till I am gone. He uproots me. He, or, he uproots my hope like a tree. His anger burns against me. He counts me among his enemies. His troops advance in force. They build a siege ramp against me and encamp around my tent. He has alienated my family from me. My acquaintances are completely estranged from me. My relatives have gone away. My closest friends have forgotten me. My guests and my female servants count me a foreigner. They look on me as a stranger. I summon my servant, but he doesn't answer, though I beg him with my own mouth. My breath is offensive to my wife. I am loathsome to my own family. Even the little boys scorn me. When I appear, they ridicule me. All my intimate friends detest me. Those I love have turned against me. I am nothing but skin and bones. I have escaped only by the skin of my teeth. Have pity on me, my friends. Have pity for the hand of God has struck me. Why do you pursue me as God does? Will you never get enough of my flesh? Oh, that my words were recorded, that they were written on a scroll, that they were inscribed with an iron tool on lead or engraved in rock forever. I know that my Redeemer lives and that in the end he will stand on the earth. And after my skin has been destroyed, yet in my flesh I will see God. I myself will see him with my own eyes, I and not another. How my heart yearns within me. If you say, how we will hound him, since the root of the troubles lie in him, you should fear the sword yourselves, for wrath, for wrath will bring punishment by the sword, and then you will know that there is judgment. Job 21-29 Zophar then Zophar the Namathite replied, My troubled thoughts prompt me to answer because I am greatly disturbed. I hear a rebuke that dishonors me and my understanding inspires me to reply. Surely you know how it has been from of old, ever since mankind was placed on the earth, that the mirth of the wicked is brief, the joy of the godless lasts but a moment. Though the pride of the godless person reaches to the heavens and his head touches the clouds, he will perish forever, like his own dung. Those who have seen him will say, where is he? Like a dream he flies away, no more to be found, 
banished like a vision of the night. The eye that saw him will not see him again. His place will look on him no more. His children must make amends to the poor. His own hands must give back his wealth. The youthful vigor that fills his bones will lie with him in the dust. Though evil is sweet in his mouth and he hides it under his tongue, though he cannot bear to let it go and let it linger in his mouth, yet his food will turn sour in his mouth, in his stomach. It will become the venom of serpents within him. He will spit out the riches he swallowed. God will make his stomach vomit them up. He will suck the poison of serpents. The fangs of an adder will kill him. He will not enjoy the streams, the rivers flowing with honey and cream. What he toiled for, he must give back uneaten. He will not enjoy the profit from his trading. For he has oppressed the poor and left them destitute. He has seized houses he did not build. Surely he will have no respite from his craving. He cannot save himself by his treasure. Nothing is left for him to devour. His prosperity will not endure. In the midst of his plenty, distress will overtake him. The full force of misery will come upon him. When he has filled his belly, God will vent his burning anger against him and rain down his blows on him. Though he flees from an iron weapon, a bronze-tipped arrow pierces him. He pulls it out of his back, the gleaming point out of his liver. Terrors will come over him. Total darkness lies in wait for his treasures. A fire unfanned will consume him and devour what is left in his tent. The heavens will expose his guilt. The earth will rise up against him. A flood will carry off his house rushing waters in the, on the day of God's wrath. Such is the fate God allots the wicked, the heritage appointed for them by God. Job 21, 1-34 Job, then Job replied, Listen carefully to my words. Let this be the consolation you give me. Bear with me while I speak, and after I have spoken, mock on. Is my complaint directed to a human being? Why, sh why should I not be impatient? Look at me and be appalled. Clap your hand over m your mouth. When I think about this, I am terrified. Trembling seizes my body. Why do the wicked live on, growing old and increasing in power? They see their children established around them, their offspring before their eyes. Their homes are safe and free from fear. The rod of God is not on them. Their bulls never fail to breed. Their cows calve and do not miscarry. They send forth their children as a flock. Their little ones dance about. They sing to the music of timbrel and lyre. They make merry to the sound of the pipe. They spend their years in prosperity and go down to the grave in peace. Yet they say to God, leave us alone. We have no desire to know your ways. Who is the Almighty that we should serve him? What, we, what would we gain by praying to him? But their prosperity is not in their own hands. So I stand aloof from the plans of the wicked. Yet how often is the lamp of the wicked snuffed out? How often does calamity come upon them? The fate God allots in his anger. How often are they like straw before the wind, like chaff swept away by a gale? It is said, God stops up the punishment of the wicked for their children. Let him repay the wicked so that they themselves will experience it. Let their own eyes see their destruction. Let them drink the cup of the wrath of the Almighty. For what do they care about the families they leave behind when their allotted months come to an end? Can anyone teach knowledge to God since he judges even the highest? One person dies in full vigor, completely secure and at ease, well nourished in body, 
bones rich with marrow. Another dies in bitterness of soul, never having enjoyed anything good. Side by side they lie in the dust, and worms cover them both. I know full well what you are thinking, the schemes by which you would wrong me. You say, where now is the house of the great, the tent where the wicked lived? Have you never questioned those who travel? Have you paid no, no regard to their accounts? That the wicked are spared from the day of calamity? That they are delivered from the day of wrath? Who denounces their conduct to their face? Who repays them for what they have done? They are carried to the grave and watch is kept over their tombs. The soil in the valley is sweet to them. Everyone follows after them and a countless throng goes before them. So how can you console me with your nonsense? Nothing is left of your answers but falsehood. New Testament NIV version, Matthew 21, 1 to 17. Jesus comes to Jerusalem as king. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was writ what was spoken through the prophet. Say to daughter Zion, See, your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, and on a colt, the fall of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and placed their cloaks on them for Jesus to sit on. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stared and asked, Who is this? The crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. Jesus at the temple. Jesus entered the temple courts and drove out all who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches of those selling doles. It is written, he said to them, My house will be called a house of prayer, but you are making it a den of robbers. The blind and the lame came to him at the temple, and he healed them. But when the chief priests and the teachers of the law saw the wonderful things he did, and the children shouting in the temple courts, Hosanna to the son of David, they were indignant. Do you hear what these children are saying? They asked him. Yes, replied Jesus. Have you never read from the lips of children and infants you, Lord, have called forth your praise. And he left them and went out of the city of Bethany where he spent the night. Psalms and Proverbs Psalm 18, 1 to 6 For the director of music, of David, the servant of the Lord, he sang to the Lord the words of his song when the Lord delivered him from the hand of all his enemies and from the hand of Saul, he said, I love you, Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. My God is my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. I call to the Lord, who is worthy of praise, and I have been saved from my enemies. The cords of death entangled me, the torrents of destruction overwhelmed me. The cords of the grave coiled around me. The snares of death confront, confronted me. In my distress, I called to the Lord. I cried to my God for help. 
from his temple. He heard my voice. My cry came before him into his ears. Amen. Thank you so much for hanging around with me. Please, if you're here and you would like to make Jesus the Lord of your life, go ahead and say this prayer after me, believing with all your heart. Repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I confess my sins and I ask for your forgiveness. Please come into my heart as my Lord and Savior. Take complete control of my life and help me to walk in your footsteps daily by the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for saving me and for answering my prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Congratulations on making Jesus the Lord of your life. We're excited to have you in the family. If you just said this prayer, please go ahead, send us a message. Someone is going to reach out to you and pray with you and help you in your new faith walk. Once again, it has been a great time of fellowship. Thank you for hanging out with us. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Share with your friends, families, and loved ones on your WhatsApp status. Let everyone know you're on this 365 days bible reading challenge invite them encourage them to join like our pages on facebook and instagram thank you so much we're excited for tomorrow is going to be another day have a blessed day bye see you tomorrow <music>